Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And today we're here with uh, Niels von Belo. Mm -hmm. And Niels von Belo is one of the co-founders of the ETCMA, the European Traditional Chinese Medicine Association. And he is also um, very much involved in the AGTCM mm -hmm. and in the um, Rotenburg Congress, TCM mm -hmm. Congress. So welcome. Thank you. And Hi, Dopey. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hopefully live next time. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We must. Yeah. We must meet live. I mean, okay. I, I like you already. So uh, we must meet <laughs> okay, <live>. great. <laughs> uh, what I found really interesting, of course, um, you know, all these great things you did, uh, founding ETCMA and um, involvement in the, the German Association. Association for Classical Acupuncture, right? Arbeitsgemeinschaft für klassische Akupunktur und traditionelle chinesische Medizin e.V. Yeah, you say it way better than I would have. So, <laughs> yeah, what I also find interesting is that you do podcasts mm -hmm. on your uh, Eats Reads West podcast. Mm -hmm. And could you tell us something about that? Yeah, I mean, I have to say this, this came out of, uh, of Corona. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a Corona product. Okay. I, um, when, uh, when Corona started, COVID started, I got really frustrated with the with the German government and the way they treated the whole thing and, and yeah. how it worked out. And um, I, I needed to do something. I had to, I had to bring out my, my aspects. And um, a good friend of mine, um, she, she had done a podcast for, the, for our school, the ABC Mitte. And um, we came together and we said, okay, we want to do something here. And Is that Anne Hardy? Anne Hardy. You know, okay, Anne yeah, Hardy. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we came together and said, okay, we want to do this. And I always wanted to do a pod or something like a podcast, which I couldn't call that, but about literature and mm -hmm. especially about um, therapeutic literature or mm -hmm. literature that is close to therapeutic and stuff like that. Okay. And that's, we came up with that idea and that's East Reads West is um, the output. And it always was clear also for us that we wanted to do German and English aspects. So if you mm -hmm. go on that website, you will find an English section, which isn't as full as the German section yet. Um, but um, it is, uh, you will find uh, English books there as well. And we're talking about all kinds of, we're talking about literature. So we have Tara Brach, for example, who's a very prominent of our um, aspects. We, we talk uh, about uh, narcissism. Um, we, but we also did a, yeah, it's quite interesting. That's one of the po most popular podcasts is about uh, uh, female male narcissism. Uh, okay. we have a, it's a, the, um, there's a Babel Wachinski, a German um, psychotherapist who did, has two books, one on female, one on male narcissism. And it's an awesome, it's a really worthwhile aspect to look at because you will see that a lot in, in your clinic. And um, that, I really, really enjoy that. So then, um, because this, this, you're talking about literature, not TCM books, but mm -hmm. literature, mm -hmm. and then you're relating it to well, clinical, um, TCM yes. clinical. E yes. <laughs> 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 More or less. Yeah. I mean, first of all, we didn't want to do it about uh, Easter. We didn't want to do it on TCM literature. We're not okay. interested in that. It's not because we don't think there is good TCM literature, but because we think that there's a lot of Western literature um, being um, psychotherapeutic, being therapy, being just literature, being good books. Yeah. Um, that can help us in our clinic. I mean, our aim is always the clinician. Uh, also, I mean, we do it also for the normal public. People, yeah, yeah. Uh, people tell us that it's quite interesting to listen to it. Mm -hmm. But our, our main aim and our main listeners are therapists. And we're trying to explain them, okay, is it worth to read this book? Why is it worth to read this book and read this book? Mm -hmm. uh, or this text or whatever. Um, okay. It's It's... Yes, we do sometimes, we bring in, of course, both, we're both um, TCM therapists. So we bring mm -hmm. out in our uh, Eastern knowledge um, and we try to build bridges, but we're not, it's not our main aim. Our main aim is if you're a therapist and if you're working with people, you want to read this book because, 
Mm. That's how that's what we do because it shows specific aspects. And normally, these aspects are not in the normal TCM uh, no. literature. That's right. That's right. Mm. Because you consider yourself as a, a pragmatic clinician, right? Absolutely. And yeah. practitioner with special interest in, in psychological <clears throat> development of yeah. patients, right? Yeah. So you think I'm, this. Yeah, I'm a systematic therapist as well. So okay. um, I do family constellations aspects uh, in my clinic. I do, um, I do a lot of systemic uh, coaching and couple coaching and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and be, both aspects go really, really well because I mean, Chinese medicine oh. is systemic. It's just systematic yeah, 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 thinking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So and bringing it together is really good. And I also feel that there is a lot of Chinese medicine, Chinese in quotation mark, mm -hmm. uh, being TCM um, literature, which is really nice. But there is, for me, there's always a problem in it. We all live in the Western world. So the TCM literature always tries to... Um, convey our aspects of life and convey into a TCM culture. Why I think that's really awesome. And I think the TCM culture and the TCM basic aspects are extremely well. I mean, I, I live these aspects mm. and I teach these aspects. I still think we live in the Eastern, in the Western world and we have Western right. practitioners. So always trying to, to bring it over doesn't really help we have to understand how the Westerner thinks, how Westerners feel and how they are talking about it. And that's normally not in the uh, Chinese TCM yeah. uh, literature. So I'm actually saying, guys, there is something really specific missing in the TCM literature. Mm -hmm. And we need to think about doing it different. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the <clears throat> one of our jobs is also the those who are knowledgeable in the traditional classical uh, TCM should translate it into modern Western society. And I think what you're saying is what we're missing is a lot of psychological aspects that we have developed here in the West, for example, uh, yeah, with Freud and Jung, mm -hmm. a lot of psychological aspects are missing in classical Chinese texts, right? Yeah, how could they? I mean, yes, yeah. they're very knowledgeable. How could they? But I mean, that's a thousand years before. We didn't know that. And I mean, if you look at Western medical fields, I mean, there are a mm -hmm. lot of people out there who think have never heard about psychology and their psychological mm -hmm. aspects in their life. Mm -hmm. what, what I also think is how we feel is closely related on the aspect how we talk meaning it's closely related to our language because our language and our how we experience feelings, they're closely related. And translating it from another culture is a, it's difficult. We have to live in our culture. We have to live in our language. And you know that you speak different languages. You know mm -hmm. how speaking in different languages makes you acquire this way, different cultural aspects. Yes. So we have to, wherever we live, wherever we treat, we have to understand the people who are there. To understand them, you have to lead, read the literature. You have to read the, what people are writing there. Yeah, right. all this translation of classical text or even modern text, text is very important to do Chinese medicine. But to understand your patients, you have to read local text. Text is very simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Definitely. Because it's, some of them are not translatable. And it's because they're so closely bind to the language. Mm -hmm. yeah. and um so so it's a it's still we are still that's the nice thing about chinese medicine we're still in this kind of two paradigm kind of aspects where we try to build bridges yeah and my i i've, I've been i've been now a therapist for 30 years and i've been i've been coming a lot from the chinese point of view and mm -hmm. to this uh, podcast i restarted to build from the other side in a way. And that's good that you can meet in the middle then at so some point. So we can point. meet in the middle and yeah. um, that's for the benefit on the one side's benefit for the therapist because mm -hmm. he can also understand himself better. And on the other side, it's great for the, for the patient, of course, because uh, we can understand them and um, give them help. Yeah. 
By the way, I like the, the I like the name. It's a really catchy name. Yeah, of thank course, you. you know, based on eats me to us, yeah, it's eat yeah. me to us. It's really yeah. catchy. Awesome. I like it. <laughs> thank you. I'm I'm really proud about that. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. asked me the on the other what I'm proud of. I love this name. Eat me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Besides my kids, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Psychology brought us to the development of a traditional Chinese medicine mm -hmm. in, in the West compared mm -hmm. to China, for mm -hmm. example, or Asia, mm -hmm. because we have a total different development here, right? Mm -hmm. of, yes. of Western, of Chinese medicine. Well, I mean, if, if I, I started in the 80s to, to do 80s, 90s to, to start do Chinese medicine, um, I remember um, reading articles in, um, in, in German papers saying that acupuncture was humbug and that uh, <laughs> you couldn't do it. I mean, literally, I, re I still have that, those articles in front of me. Um, so, but uh, coming with all this um, new age uh, green movement came all these natural therapies and acupuncture mm. was one of those. So it's actually a new kind, we are kind of a new, new, um, new therapy with acupuncture and TCM. And, but we're very strongly influenced um, by, the, by the more psychological aspects of life. Um, especially the development of five phases in, in England is very strongly influenced by, 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 the fi by psychological aspects. And I mean, if you look at it, we treat normally treat once a week. We normally take about 45 minutes. That's like psychologists. I mean, it's very closely mm. related. Mm. And if you, I always say that the Western, our Western um, TCM aspect or our western tcm tradition is much more based on that one um although i mean having said that of course because we have such a long tradition by now as well i mean it's not just 10 years by now so but we're talking about 50 50 years and you can yeah. see that um, some of our grand old people like machocha like hugh mcpherson they have died now i mean they uh, they're gone and and um, so all, all our all, our first forefathers who were on the forefront um, of our development. They're starting to die, or they're starting to get old, so they're phasing out. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's there's a traditional shift. There's a shift in generations, and um, so the development is going on. And we and there are lots of aspects that are really that the Japanese aspect is very big by now. Herbal medicine, as you know, is get, getting bigger as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's still growing, especially herbal medicine is still a, a rather small part, but it's growing. Yeah, and um, it's so it's it's we're still in the middle of a development of a culture for TCM in the West. Yeah, but we can definitely say we have distinguished ourselves from China. We have distinguished ourselves from the Chinese tradition in a way that we have started to build up our own tradition, which is typical Chinese in a way. Yeah? It's typical Chinese medicine. Yeah, that's what Chinese medicine is about. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the history, how much things they incorporated. Yeah, five yeah. five phases, uh, six uh, six shift, and I mean the five mm -hmm. and six. This has always mm -hmm. been always take it all together and yeah. build your own world out of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it doesn't fit, make it fit. <laughs> well, that's the interesting thing. It's just uh, the flowing nature of TCM, and yes. so now Western TCM has become its own entity, right? And it's still yeah. growing and developing. But the interesting thing is now uh, the Asian Chinese uh, uh, um, TCM is looking at this specific Western TCM entity, and they're also studying the Western TCM. Well, I mean, if you look at the Chinese history, um, the Cultural Revolution destroyed about 90% of uh, Chinese history. So, yeah. I mean, if, you, if you're serious about it, China cut off its roots. And this is especially, uh, you can especially see that in the Chinese medicine because Chinese medicine has always been one of those fields where roots and where we come from is very strong, very mm. important, and it's always life-giving. Mm. So if you have a country that cut off its roots, um, its medicine will realize that. And I mean, seriously, all those things that we know about Chinese medicine, they come from Taiwan or they come from Hong Kong or they come from Australia or they come from Japan. Um, so that, that's what always happens. And I mean, that's not a new thing. 
If you look at the uh, Neijing Su Wen, the, the, the text that we use or Paul Unschuld use, is a re importation from Japan of the 13th, 14th century. So mm -hmm. there's always been the time where China has written out their, their roots. And mm -hmm. um, that's why they're looking at us because we're actually the traditionalists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're the old guys. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. we're looking at the old texts. I mean, who, who in, in China can read the old text? I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, especially the younger generation. Yes, I mean, mm -hmm. um, so so yes, but that's what China is also, I think, what's always important. Interesting, they always, it's, they're always very pragmatic and that's what I love about Chinese medicine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to that, be pragmatic. Doesn't matter where it comes from. That's why I do my podcast. Yeah, it doesn't matter where the information comes from. If it's a Western literature, if somebody who mm -hmm. doesn't know anything about TCM tells me something about a human being that I might incorporate in my practice, then mm -hmm. I will read it. Okay, yeah. it sounds great. It sounds great. I really enjoy your podcast. I think we, you know, Thank we should you. do something one day with uh, yes, books. Yes, love to. Like look, love do to. a book review or something. Yes, Just I give would me love time to. to catch up. Yes, yes, <laughs> and let's do. No, let's plan something like that. I will yeah. talk to Anna Hardy. And we will plan something. Um, we'll, let's look at some books that we like to do. We have a list. Yeah. And right. um, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a call. I'll give you a call, send you an email and ask yeah. you if you're interested. And then we'll do it three times. That would be awesome. Okay. okay. That'd be Thanks. superb. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, great. You heard it here first, folks. So we're going to do <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so um, great. I hope to see you again. Hopefully, you know, the next um, big Congress that's coming up or yes. maybe not this one, but the next no. one. Yeah. Because this yeah. one is virtual. Yeah. And um, yeah, we'll have yeah. a drink together. Yes, and come to Rotenberg. <laughs> Definitely. Yes, yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.